Right, this is the first video where we're going to look at oxidative phosphorylation, so hence part one. Um, I'm going to try and break this down a little bit because I think it is one of the difficult parts. And In fact, this first video is, is more about setting up the language we're going to use uh, and, and try and get your head around what's happening before we actually get into the detail of it. So I think there are a few um, rather complex bits. Uh, firstly, we'll deal with NAD. Now, I think the whole point behind what I'm going to go on about here is to keep in mind that this is the key molecule. So this NAD, which has picked up two hydrogens, should really write that out, shouldn't I? Um, two hydrogen atoms uh, plus NAD. Oh dear. A bit squashed, you get the idea. And notice it is not H2, it is two hydrogen atoms. Um, the NAD becomes reduced NAD. Now you'll see it written in several ways. The, the one that's favoured in your textbooks, uh, and I would suggest you use is that to put reduced NAD. That's fine. Uh, if you're worried about, you know, should I write the whole thing out? If you're on an exam, I would write the whole thing out first, and then afterwards, you, know, you can put red NAD, and, and they, they will accept that. They know what that is. They're happy enough. Um, you will also though see it written like this from some sources means the same thing. You'll also sometimes see it written, I suppose a bit more technically correct, like that. Um, you might think, well hang on, is it two hydrogens or not? Where's this extra hydrogen gone off? Um, uh, it, it doesn't matter where it's gone is, is, is the sort of unsatisfactory answer. Um, th that's probably a good version for it. If you want to look it up and see where it actually goes, then fine. But I think sticking with just calling it reduced NAD like this um, will, will be fine for us. Um, and we'll stick with that. So we'll call it reduced NAD. We're going to make as much of this um, as we can in our various stages. So we've had, for example, um, let's just go through them. We had glycolysis, where we made two lots of reduced NAD. Okay, so now that I've written reduced out in full, I can write red NAD and everyone's happy. Um, the link reaction. Remember that the link reaction is going to happen twice per um, molecule of glucose. All of these things assume you start with, you can think of it as a molecule of glucose or you can think of it as a mole of glucose. It doesn't matter um, as long as you realise that by the time we get to the link reaction, we've got two link reactions because it's split into two pyruvates. So overall there we make another two reduced NAD. We then enter Krebs cycle in the, uh, the matrix of mitochondria. And if you remember the little rhyme from the other videos, NAD, NAD, ATP, FAD, NAD, 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 ATP, there's three NAD reduced NADs made there. But of course, we go around twice, so it's two lots of that, equals six reduced NAD. So just to get our totals here, two, four, another six, we've got a total of 10 reduced NADs. Okay. And bear in mind that's the bit that's going to be important to us because this is where we get um, out, um, huge amounts of um, potential energy from. And this is why this method, oxidative phosphorylation, um, is it, so much more effective than things like fermentation gives us so much ATP. We'll come to that in a, another video. Um, I just wanted to also impress the importance of these terms of reduction and oxidation. Now there are a couple of ways you can think of reduction. Um, the oil rig one, one you, you probably you know, learn, is oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. If you lose electrons from something, you have become oxidised. If you gain electrons, you have become reduced. Okay, so one way you can think of reduction is gaining electrons. And that will become important to us in a second when we look at the electron transport chain. But another way you can think of it is um, adding hydrogen. And if you think about that for a second, um, if I have a molecule, well, like the, the NAD up here, if I add hydrogen to it, hydrogen, remember, has just got one uh, electron in its, its outside orbit, if you like. Uh, and when it, when it joins chemically to something, it tends to give that electron up. So whatever it joins to uh, has gained the electron from it. So that's why gain, uh, adding a hydrogen to something is the same as often the same as saying gaining electrons but technically reduction is gaining electrons it's just easier to think of it as adding hydrogen in the same way or in a similar way um, oxidation is uh, losing electrons 
Why? Well, because uh, it, oxygen, which has got, I'm just going to draw the, the outside, the valence shell, if you like, has got one, two, three, four, five, six electrons on it. When it tends to join onto something, some substance, doesn't matter what it is, it takes electrons to become um, electrically neutral. So this is why oxidising um, and losing electrons are often th thought, thought in the same way. When this reaction was first discovered, they thought it was only oxygen that could do it. Uh, it later turns out that um, other elements can do it as well, but the name unfortunately stuck. So oxidation doesn't actually have to have anything to do with oxygen at all. Uh, we'll, we'll blame the chemists for this one, why not? Um, I know it gets confusing, but just think of oxidation of losing electrons. It will become more important and a bit clearer when we get into the electron transport chain, which is um, what we'll get to in a second. Just one further point, for some reason, no idea why, um, in the OCR textbooks, they ignore FAD for some reason. We get two molecules of it in the Krebs cycle, two lots of reduced FAD. They've chosen to ignore it. I'll tell you where it fits in later. If you want to look it up, um, you know you can. You'll come across all kinds of molecules like succinate and things um, that you don't need to know. But I'll put that back in later. I'll show you where it all comes from. <laughs> 